Hello everyone. I would like to thank you so much for joining me for our week four session in our stress reduction course. I ask that you find yourself in a comfortable seated pose or maybe we can find ourselves laying down in our beds or sofa. Whatever feels comfortable for you, may you take that place. Now that we have found ourselves in our comfortable pose, maybe we can take a nice, deep, intentional breath in. Hold the breath. Exhale through the mouth. Maybe we notice how the breath relaxes and soothes our minds and our bodies. Maybe we notice the way our shoulders relax downward away from our ears. Maybe. Inhale. Exhale. Ensuring that our abdominal muscles are nice and tight our shoulders are back nice and tall. Our spinal cord is nice and long. Maybe we can gaze downward towards the earth, bringing our palms together at heart center if we choose. Inhale. Exhale. Noticing how the down gaze and the breath relaxes and soothes our mind and our body. Holding this pose for a couple seconds as we use this moment to go inward here today. Allowing the down gaze to bring our attention to this present moment in the now. Inhale. Exhale. Placing our palms beside our bodies. Our hands are touching the earth or our beds or our chair, wherever we may be. Palms are downward building the vibrations and the energies of our environment. Simply being aware. Inhale. Exhale. As we flow into our spinal twist, right side, allowing our left hand to touch our right knee. As our right hand goes behind our backs, and we softly gaze over that right shoulder, feeling our spinal cords twist here. We'll hold this pose for four to five breaths. Exhaling back to center, spinal twist, opposite side. Right hand goes on left knee. As our left hand goes behind our backs, as we softly gaze over that left shoulder, we'll hold this for four to five breaths. Exhaling back to center. Breathing our palms above our head. We are in our seated salute, palms above the head. Tummy's nice and tight. Maybe we can bring our palms together as we exhale to seated prayer. Palms are together at heart center. Inhale. Exhale. Maybe we can thank ourselves for allowing ourselves to 
practice self-care here today. Continuing to gaze downward, bringing our awareness to the here and the now. The session here is going to help us bring awareness to our present moments in our daily lives. Focusing on the situation that is at hand or maybe the person or people we are talking to. The exercises that we are doing today is simply just helping us become aware of the moment. And sometimes when we are in our present moments, for example, someone may be speaking with us and we're listening, but our mind sometimes is wondering about the birthday party next week or back to school night. We're gonna work on some techniques that's gonna help us be more aware of our present moments that way we are not shifting and thinking of other things or other people. Awareness of the now. Inhale. Exhale. Gazing downward towards the earth. Allowing our minds and bodies to become centered here today. giving awareness and our full attention to our present moment. As we relax our hands downward towards the earth, allowing our palms to feel the sensations of our current environment. Centering our minds here, centering our bodies in this moment. Breathe in. Exhale through the mouth. Noticing what's going on within, without judgment. Simply being aware, simply paying attention, simply noticing, without judgment. I received an email from one of the participants and they gave me the okay to share their question with the group. And the question was, I've been taking this mindfulness course and watching the sessions over and over again. And it is really relaxing, but sometimes I still feel my mind wander. How do I stop the activity? We call that mental chatter. And of course, when we're practicing mindfulness, we're not saying stop all thoughts. We're not saying that we're gonna be mindful of the present moment and no other thoughts will come to our mind. We will have thoughts when we're practicing mindfulness. We will have feelings. But when we are mindful, we realize that we have thoughts and we realize that we have feelings and we take notice of what they are. However, we don't allow those thoughts and those feelings to distract us from our present moment. Again, we take a mental note of what we feel, of what we are experiencing at that moment. We take mental notes of the thoughts and emotions that come to mind. Taking note, being aware, and understanding without judgment. And that's the thing. Allowing the thoughts to come, allowing the feelings to come, and being aware of them without judgment, and not letting those thoughts and feelings get the best of us. When we are mindful, we are, we are aware that feelings come, that thoughts come, and we try to redirect our thoughts once we realize a thought crept into our head. Sometimes thoughts come into our mind and we might think about it for a couple seconds or a minute or two before we even realize that thought just came in and, and disrupted my mindfulness. But the fact that you realized the thought came in and disrupted your mindfulness makes you mindful because you didn't just drift away and forget 
that you were practicing mindfulness. You realized something came in and it drifted you away for a little bit, but then you brought your attention back to the present moment. That is mindfulness. We will have thoughts, we will have emotions, we will have feelings, and sometimes we'll let them come in and we'll let them take us away. But the moment we realize we've just been taken away and we come back to that present moment, that is mindfulness. See that there we are aware of the thoughts and the feelings that we are experiencing, either good or bad, without judgment. So when we are practicing mindfulness and you are having thoughts and you are having feelings and you are having emotions, it is okay being aware. We're not saying shut off the brain and thoughts will stop coming. Some people say that they can do that, but they say it takes years and years of training and techniques. Um, but what we are doing here today is we're not trying to shut off the mind. We are simply being aware of our thoughts. We are working on being aware of our feelings and emotions without judgment. We are working on noticing how we are and we are working on changing for the better. That's what we are here doing today. That is what we are here. That is what this course is all about. Stress reduction. Noticing how we are. Noticing how we react. Noticing how we respond. And coming up with ways that are healthy. We're not trying to shut off our brain. We're not trying to stop everything. We are working on our awareness with self. But I thank you for that question. That is a very good question. Um, and I thank you for allowing me to share your question with the group. And for those who may have thought that practicing mindfulness means shutting off the mind and not letting no thoughts come in that is not what we're doing we are working on awareness of self we are working on awareness of how we are and finding ways to reduce stress we want to have thoughts we want to be aware we want to notice those thoughts we want to pay attention to those thoughts and we want to work on not letting those thoughts get the best of us either good or bad we want to work on being focused in a present moment we want to work on giving whoever we are talking to we want to work on whatever we are doing we want to give that our full attention because as we know, often when someone's telling us a story, or maybe we're working, we should be paying full attention, sometimes our mind drift. And it's not fair to the person who's talking to us or the job that we're doing. So what we're doing is just working on ways to become more aware. Because of course, when we are more aware and when we are more focused, we do better. We hear better, we can help someone better just by being aware and more focused. And again, even when you're talking to someone and even when, when we're working and doing our job, things and thoughts, feelings and emotions will come to mind and we will notice them. We will take a mental note of them. We will be aware of them without judgment and we'll get back to what we are doing. That is awareness. So I thank you so much for sharing that, for sharing that question with the group. Maybe we can gaze downward towards the earth and take another nice, deep, intentional breath in. Hold in a breath as we exhale through our mouth. Maybe we can bring our palms together at heart center. Maybe we can softly rub our hands, feeling the friction here, generating heat here, simply being aware of how that feels. Finding pause, palms at heart center, gazing down, inhale. how our shoulders relax downward away from our ears, completely relaxing the body. Going inward here today, being centered, being focused on our present moment. Okay, I came across this article and I thought it was very interesting and I'm going to share it with you here today. And it goes on to say, when you know your weaknesses, you are beautiful. When you know your weaknesses, you are beautiful. Understanding and realizing that we are not going to be strong in everything. And we are willing to ask for help when needed. Knowing our weaknesses, accepting ourselves for who we are, makes us beautiful. However, in some cases, when we have our weaknesses, there are sometimes things that we can do to make ourselves stronger. But we first have to realize it is a weakness. Once we realize that, we can work on ways to become stronger. Realizing and understanding that we are not going to be strong at everything. Realizing and understanding that there are things that we all can work on to make us stronger. And saying, hey, I know I can't do that yet, but watch me do it later. Hmm, I might not be able to do that now, but give me some time and watch me do that. 
Understanding my weaknesses makes me beautiful, especially when I'm saying, hmm, I can't do it now. Give me some time and watch me do it. Oh, that is a beautiful response. Opposed to saying, oh, I can't do this and being hateful with yourself or mad at yourself for not being able to do, hmm, I can't do it now. Give me time. When you appreciate your flaws, you are wise. When we appreciate our flaws, we are wise. We all have flaws. We all have something about ourselves that we wish we could change. And sometimes we say, hey, you know what? My flaw is my uniqueness. You know, back in the day, I used to have things about myself that I wish that I could change. Now I realize those things that I wish I could change made me who I am, made me unique. So now I no longer wish I could change my flaws. I no longer wish I can even change my past because again, that past made me who I am as well. Without that past, I may not be who I am today. And it goes on to say, when we are wise, we learn from our mistakes. And when we are wise, we learn from other people's mistakes. Sometimes we can just look on, look out and see what happens and say, hey, I saw what happened to so-and-so. When they did this, when they said that, I am gonna not do that. That's why sometimes we don't have to make our own mistakes to learn a lesson. Sometimes we can see that the fire burns, you know? It is hard to even see the things that we do as negative. Sometimes we are quick to blame other people. But again, when we are aware and we realize, we see the mistakes that we may have did and we learn that is wisdom. And, the, and we don't just learn. We vow to never do it again. That's wisdom and strength. Maybe we can notice how we feel right now at this present moment within our bodies. And if we choose, maybe we can find ourselves to a tabletop pose, being on our hands and knees. If we choose, this is just an option. May we find ourselves in our tabletop pose. Relaxing our bodies here. Coming up to our cat. Chin coming towards the clavicle. Exhaling back to our cow. Breathing to our cat, noticing how this feels in our body. Coming back to our cow. Coming back to table. Exhaling to our down dog, lifting our bodies up off the floor. Gazing back at our feet. Noticing how we feel as we build strength here in our arms and our down dog. Hold it a pose for a couple, hold it a pose for a couple breaths. Fill in a stretch. Coming back down to our tabletop pose. Hands are underneath our shoulders. Dropping down to our cow. Feeling a curvature in our spinal cord, feeling a back bend as we breathe back to our cat. Coming back to our table, flowing back to our hero's pose, allowing our, allowing our buttocks to come to our heels of our feet. We are in our hero's pose, placing our palms on our laps in front of us, simply gazing forward, checking in, seeing how this feels. As we breathe our bodies up to a kneel position, flowing up to our camel pose, bringing our hands to the lower parts of our backs, we're gonna work on our camel pose here. Noticing how this feels in our bodies, being in the present moment. Maybe we can lift our shoulders up towards our ears and roll our shoulders towards the back. Simply seeing how this feels in our bodies. May we do a couple more shoulder shrugs here, loosening up our upper body. Finding pause as we allow our shoulders and our head to lean towards the back and our chest comes forward. Fill in the slight back bend here in our camel. If we choose, maybe we can allow our head to fall backwards between our Shoulder blades, if we're able, completely relaxing our shoulders backwards, feeling your bodies relax.
We'll hold this for four more breaths. Completely relaxing the body. Exhaling back up to our kneel position. Noticing how we feel. Crossing our feet behind us as we find our bodies back into our seated pose. Now that we are in our seated position or lying position, maybe we can bring our palms together at heart center, closing our eyes or gazing downward, simply being aware of how our bodies feel within. Without judgment, simply noticing. Breathe in. Exhale. Continuing to be aware of the present moment. Using a breath and a down gaze to keep our awareness here. Using the breath to keep us centered. Focusing on the here. Focusing on the now. I would just like to share a quick brief that I wrote. When thinking about life, remember this. No amount of guilt can solve the past and no amount of anxiety can change the future. All we can do is live where we are, right here, right now. Maybe we can work on continuing to be present in our present moment because all we have is the here and the now. Maybe we cannot let it slip away. Focusing on who we are, being thankful and grateful for what we are experiencing right now don't let it slip away a lot of times we are so caught up in the end result that we lose focus on the journey of getting to that end result many people say and I've heard and I've have heard before that the fun is in the journey and once we reach that destination then what you know we're there then we find a new destination to get to. If we do, that's a beautiful thing. And then the fun is gonna be in that journey as well. And it's a beautiful thing to have visions and wanna have an end result. But we must not forget about the journey of getting there, the experiences and the things we learn during that process is equally important as the final project. The fun is in the learning, the fun is in the doing, the fun is in the getting there. We want to make sure that we are focusing on that moment as well. And not wishing and hurrying for that to come. Because again, once that comes, then what? We have it. We got it in our hands. And a lot of times we feel happy with it for a while. And then we look for another journey. And that's that's great. And again, in that new journey, the fun is going to be in that new vision, in that new goal. The fun is going to be again in a journey. And the trials and tribulations and the learning processes and the learning curves and the learning curves that comes with developing and building new things, the hiccups that comes with it. All of those things indeed makes us stronger. And that is all part of the process, the ups and the downs, the sweat, the pain, the tears, uh, ooh, the drama of doing something new, the drama of the present moment. You know, being in the present moment and living in the present moment is, is, is beautiful, it's everything. Because at this moment, at that time, it will never come again. Once it's gone, it's gone. We can never get it back. That's, I believe that it's important to be aware of our present moment and give full attention to that present moment. To get all that we can get out of that present moment. To learn all that we can learn. 
out of that present moment where we are right here, right now in life. And then take in that present moment to the next day and the next day, etc., etc. And everything that we learn in all of our days, being aware and focused on that. That is how we truly learn. That's how we truly see the lesson. And everything that we do, good or bad, we see the lesson by being fully aware. Sometimes we miss the lesson by over-talking when something's happening, overthinking, focusing on our cell phones opposed to being right there in the present moment. You're at a conference, you're here, you're in class, and something's going on, and we're focused on uh, a social media post, or we're focused on something. We're focused on something on our cell phone, and we're not focusing right here, right then on that present moment, and we miss an important fact that could have been essential to us and could have helped us. But because we wasn't focused, we missed it. We missed that opportunity. We missed that vital key. We missed that phrase that may have clicked something in our heart, minds, and souls. But we missed it because we wasn't in the present moment. We were, we were in our phones reading an email or maybe reading a book in front of us opposed to paying attention to the speaker. Living in a present moment is everything. Once the moment has passed, it's gone. We can no longer experience it again. It's gone. Maybe we can work on not letting the present moment slip away. Maybe teaching ourselves to continue to be present in the moment, in the now. Maybe. How about that? A nice example of not living in the present moment or paying attention to the now is I'm having a conversation with someone and they're telling me an in-depth story and it's very important to them and they must share and they need my full attention. However, as they're telling me their story, I am thinking of the party next week. I am thinking of an argument I had. I am thinking about a debate. I'm thinking about dinner for Sunday night. I'm thinking about presents, Christmas presents, whatever. I am not completely listening. That is an example of not being in the present moment because we all know when we are telling, we all know that when we are telling someone a story and when we are sharing something personal, we appreciate and expect that person to give us their full attention. And when they don't, and especially if we realize they're drifting off into never, never land, it becomes frustrating. So we want to do to others as we want done to us. So maybe we can take that into consideration. Another example is you could be at work. Maybe you have a high profile job or maybe you don't. Simply answering the phones is a, is a spectacular job. However, we are allowing the phones to ring and ring and ring because we're talking on the phone to a personal call or we are scrolling social media or doing a post for all we know. We are not paying attention to the present moment. We are also not doing our job. We are also having clients and patients calling and not getting through, which in return could allow them to call someone else because we were not in the present moment and focused on our job at that present moment. We did not get that phone call. We allowed the phone to ring 10 times before we finally picked up, which doesn't make our job, our workplace, our employer look great when people don't answer the phones. Because think about it, how we feel when we're calling someone, we're calling a place, and it's urgent that we get through. Do we or do we not sometimes get agitated when we're on hold forever or when they don't pick up at all? Of course, there are gonna be times when we are busy, but if we are not busy and we're just and we are just preoccupied with something else that's not work, work related. We are not living in the present moment. We are not focused. We are not living in the now. So these are just a couple of examples of how we can pay more attention to the now and live in the now, which in the long run will be beneficial to us and our well-being and our work ethic. It will show. It definitely will show. Just as not paying attention, not doing our job completely shows. The bosses know. People know. We think that we're slick, we can do this, we can do that, and they won't be aware, but they are aware. So those are just a couple of examples of being in the now and living in the now. 
Um, and I'm pretty sure we can all think of times when we were not focused, when we were not paying attention. Maybe we was watching a movie or, or out on a date or talking on the phone or even out with our friends at a restaurant, with family at a restaurant, and we spent half the time, you know, checking our social media sites or checking our work emails. We're not living in a moment. We're not living in a now. We're letting that precious moment between us and our family slip away by being preoccupied with our phone. And again, those precious moments will never be here again. Those precious moments will not be here again. So maybe we can work on not allowing the precious moments with loved ones slip away by being preoccupied with things that we do not need to be. That is how we are living in a now, how we are living in a present moment, being focused on what's going on. It's just a thought. So maybe we can work on that as well. What could we do today that will help us work on being more aware of our present moment? What could we do that will help us to better focus on working on the now? Indeed, it starts with awareness when our mind drifts away. That is always the start. Awareness is always the start. But is there anything, any tricks, any techniques that we know of that can help us? Maybe we can critique how we handle our day-to-day -day situations and maybe come up with our intrinsic ways of being more focused on our present moment. May it be at home or at work or maybe just out and about in our daily leisure activities. What are some of the things that we can do? For we know how we are and we know our daily surroundings. Maybe we can critique. When I'm at work, what can I do to help me stay focused? When I'm at work, what do I need to stop doing that will help me get my job done better and faster and more efficiently? What can I do that will allow me to get the most out of my job, to get the most out of my day? What things do I need to stop or take a step back from or slow down on? What are some of the things that we can stop doing to help us be more aware, more present, no matter where we are, who we are with, and what we are doing? And I'm asking that we critique ourselves and come up with this answer ourselves because we know our daily activities and we know what we do daily and we know what we can ease back off of or maybe stop doing all together to help us be more present in that moment. So maybe we can bring our palms together at heart center, gaze in our eyes downward or closing our eyes if we feel comfortable. Inhale. Hold in a breath, exhale through the mouth. Noticing our shoulders relaxing down away from our ears. Our bodies are completely relaxing here. Taking the moment to critique, to think, to look back on and to see what we can do to be more productive, to be more aware, to be more focused on people, places, or things. May we sit here and sit in our thoughts for a couple of moments, going inward, being aware, taking notice, and most importantly, whatever we come up with, without judgment, always without judgment, whatever thoughts and feelings arise, may we please keep in mind to be kind to ourselves, to be gentle to ourselves, and always without judgment.
We are simply being aware and working on ways to do better, to be better, to be more efficient. For we are all human and we all can work on something. May we go inward here. May we take a nice, deep, intentional breath in. Hold the breath for a couple seconds. Exhale through the mouth. Noticing how this feels. Inhale. Exhale. Relaxing our minds and our bodies. Maybe gazing our eyes downward and closing our eyes. Noticing how this feels. Simply being aware of the present moment. So we have two more classes left after this week four course and I am just so grateful and so thankful that you guys are taking the time to sit and listen to me and take this course thank you so much for helping me with my graduation requirements I do appreciate it for the email question that I received I thank you so much for allowing me to share your question with the group it, it was a great question and thank you so much if anyone else has any questions even if I don't share them with the group please please keep them coming um again you guys know the ones who have reached out to me already know that I'm there I am available you email me you text me and I respond within 30 minutes unless it's late at night and then I respond first thing in the morning um but I am I am available and I appreciate the messages I appreciate the responses I, I am so grateful I tell you this this course for week four this only week four and I'm so thankful to you guys for just being here with me so peace and blessings be to you and I am grateful to you I am so grateful thank you once again and I will see you next week when I'm at this is Vanessa Jackson and until next time be safe stay well thank you again thank you so much